everybody out there on TV to know it. I am the greatest. I'm going to show them all their own because I'm the champion. There'll never be one like He's the GOAT. He was a, an icon, social justice, everything. Watch that speech and you'll be like, I don't maybe necessarily know Twitter. You've been reading about a bad drag. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Okay, let's let's completely shift gears. Uh, let's go vintage. In this stack, the first thing I see popping out, these have gone up quite a bit lately, and I think they still have a ton of room to grow because he's he's the GOAT. He was a an icon, um, social justice, everything. We've got a 1960 Hemet's Journal Cassius Clay, and it's a PSA 9. Uh, this card is gorgeous. Uh, I, I'm kind of curious why it's not a PSA 10, uh, but it's a pop 11, I believe, PSA 9, so very low pop, and there's only one PSA 10. We actually have it in our vault, and I know the guy is not a seller. I've tried. <laughs> so is that is it? Wait, is that a, is that a is that a uh, call signal? Do do not call you to have a private sale on it. Well, keep keep calling. <laughs> but if you're looking for a high grade uh, Ali rookie in a in a PSA nine, yeah, uh, this is it. I mean, this is it. You only have there's only eleven that exist, and the PSA ten right now, as far as I know, is not available. So um, for who he was and what this card is, it's a beast. Yeah. Agreed. It's a beast. Agreed. Um, another really cool vintage card that we have in this auction, and I think these in general are really undervalued, um, and that's Hall of Fame vintage Hall of Fame autographs, on-card autos. Um, obviously, they didn't start putting autos on cards until the 90s, yeah. um, 97, and this is a 1933 Gaudi Lou Gehrig, card number 92, um, and it's it's got a, his autograph on it, and I believe there's only 10 copies that have ever been authenticated by PSA as an on-card auto from a 33 Gaudi Gehrig. It's it's Gehrig, it's Gowdy. If you have not seen Gehrig's farewell speech, oh, watch amazing. it on YouTube. Oh yeah, it's and you're gonna want to collect Gehrig. I know. And, and he's still, and I get it. We're in this day of modernity of like everybody wants to look at the most modern, flashy thing. Like watch that speech, and you'll be like, I don't maybe necessarily know the footage, I don't know the stats, but you'll like the man. Yeah. And that's a great card. Totally love this card. Totally Thank undervalued you. in my opinion. I think that these vintage Hall of Fame autograph cards have a ton of room to grow. A yeah. ton of room to grow. So, so man, can I go, hey, go try to find another one or go, go get one. You can't, right? You just can't. They're it's done. A, but it is the first mass-produced baseball card, those uh, Gaudi cards after, mm -hmm. uh, of course, the T206 and, and um, those tobacco cards. But it's they're hard and they're becoming like, you can't get them unless right. you're willing to spend a small fortune. Totally agree. Uh, another really great card we have vintage wise is a 52 tops maze um, in a PSA 8 and you know most people know by now that 52 tops was obviously their first year their first production tops was just acquired uh, the news came out yesterday by fanatics and so this card itself it's a little cockeyed um, but outside of that it is a gorgeous copy beautiful print the centering like I said just outside of being a little bit cockeyed is really good. And I think this was just a smidge away from a PWCCA. It's a, it's a beautiful copy and a great card. If you don't own a 52 Tops card in any condition, you should look into buying one because it's just such an iconic set. Super iconic. And when I'm buying again, I'll buy from a historical asset standpoint, but I'll also buy from an emotional collectible standpoint. And I will share with you, I love Willie Mays cards in mm -hmm. general, because yep. when I started going to shows, like many people in the early 90s, Willie was at all the shows. And my younger brother, who's deceased and passed now, uh, Willie would always have him come sit with him. This is a true story. Every show, and we probably went to 20 shows over the like two, three, four years. Really? You remember my brother would have him come sit with him. He'd rip wax with my brother. They'd eat Willie the gum would? Up. Willie would. And That's uh, he'd, he'd eat gum with them, and he'd sit there while he signed his autos, and my brother would hang out with him. I remember him every show, he'd have him up. And so no I love Willie Mays. I just think he's That's an, cool an amazing story. person. And the other cool thing is, Willie, you're out there, man. You're still you're still doing your thing, and it's great to, that, that you're here. I know that he did a tour with uh, Major League Baseball yep. a couple of years ago. Yep. But Hank's gone, um, uh, obviously. Um, we're losing greats left and right. A it feels lot like. of them are, yeah. are, are gone, and, and uh, Willie's still here. And so it's, it's really cool to be able to look at some of these grail pieces and say Willie's around to see them sell and yeah. to, to see what they've become. So. And this is one of the nicer PSAs that, that I've seen. I know it's not stickered, but it's close, and it's, it's a very, very nice copy. Will you hold me? 
All right. Po you need post, post Here, I'll let, you, I'll let you finish the last two vintage. All right. All right. Cool. So um, I'm a Chicago Bears fan, unfortunately. But, <laughs> Bless your heart. I mean, other than, <laughs> other than I can say Jay Cutler and Rex Grossman. I mean, oh, come yeah. on. The team is team's essentially worthless to be kidding. For those that love the Bears or you just love great running backs, this is uh, – Museum worthy. 1976 tops Walter Payton. This is a PSA Gem Mint 10. This copy is perfect. I mean, if not for just one little print variation on the left border. It's a and beautiful copy. I looked at those, this one pretty close. I think it's, uh, we stickered it, right? Is it a PBCC We did a? sticker it. Yeah, it's okay. an ace. It's above average. It's yep. top 30%. Yep. And if you haven't seen the content that we just produced on our eye appeal process, Take a look at it. It was really cool. Somebody that's been doing this like me for a long time in this hobby. It was cool the to like technicality lift the veil a little bit, right? right? Because right. it's part of the gamification fun of, of, of sending your cards in the PWCC. You realize these guys have looked at so many cards, hundreds of thousands, millions of cards. And so this is an I appeal a, again, top 30%. And I think uh, from my memory, there's very few of those that we have stickered because that year, it's the same cardstock that was used in like 80s tops uh, baseball. Yes. Very condition sensitive. That's why there's very few Henderson tens. Um, there's less than 60 PSA tens of Peyton, and so it's it's a tough it's a tough paper stock. It's and brutal. It's it's a, and that card is absolutely dead nut centered. It's a beautiful copy. Yeah, and so this is another nostalgic piece for me, and I know people say, don't buy nostalgia. I like buying <laughs> nostalgia a little bit uh, because now you have not only an investment grade asset, but you've got nostalgia too here with, with if you're a fan, and again, th this card, so I love it. Thank you yep. for letting me showcase it. Okay, this is kind of a cool story I've got in front of me. This is an SGC5, a really important card right now, always truly, but right now even more than ever. And that is the 1948-49 Leaf uh, Jackie Robinson. These cards are so cool. And this is the 75th anniversary of Jackie breaking the color barrier for right. baseball. So Baseball Hall of Fame, uh, many of you may know, some may not know. PWCC has a partnership and has for many years where we actually have a process where the Baseball Hall of Fame curates some of the cards mm -hmm. of our customers. They take them, they put them in the Hall of Fame Museum in and Cooperstown display and display. Yep. We're doing some unique things with them this year. We've got a lot of customers loaning their cards out there. What a cool thing to be Very like, cool. so hey, what's cool about your card collection? Well, nothing big, but you know, a couple of my cards are on display at Cooperstown. I mean, <laughs> That's very cool. L legendary. Very cool. Legendary. Um, and so this Jackie card is his, I know there's the Bond breads that are now considered his his rookie cards. By well, the that, but that's his mainstream rookie. This is his mass that's production his rookie. rookie. Right. And this is such a hard card to get. The sales for this have been going all over the place right. on every platform I've been watching them because totally. they're like, can I maybe get one without anybody noticing, you know? <laughs> uh, it, within my own internal family unit, like, can I, can I, can I do it? I haven't been able to, unfortunately. Yeah. But um, I assume this this card is going to do really well within the premier auction, and um, yeah, I want it. It's Jackie. It's Jackie. Too bad Very you cool. can't bid. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Hey, listen, I can want it, though, right? <laughs>